An iluongi ni ode ga diambo undiegi mano nyinga mo a Kenya kae Ah ah o Kenya Kenya ani a Norway Kenya kae le moga eh wale mogi kanisa mo le ungi ni FPFK Okay eh tompira ni bei pako Ah ah am pera tanya lo pako gor ma yeta nyaka paki nikech gin yo luo mo gom pera ma pera donge A hero gi mo loyo kabisa tompira ta kia goyo Ah kia kabisa Eh anja gor eh ero kama no Ando dongo nyola kae koro nyaka dulua nyaka nge eh nyola moroni eh Ah hii ni mbato sana 20 something eh tuinge FC Leopards FC Leopards be ange yo eh mama na se winjo to ka oka gina na gor ma ya ma ben that's what happens if you come into contact with a strong or rather dominant tribe. You get to be swept off your feet. You get to adopt not just their language but also their culture. When this happens to one person, we often don't think so much about it. But what if it happens to a whole ethnic group, a whole tribe? My name is Kogot Peter and in this video, I'll take you through the losses and gains of Luo assimilation. What is an assimilation? Assimilation is when a whole tribe, a whole ethnic group, gets to adopt the language and the culture of another ethnic group, consequently losing their own. Here's something I would like to clarify. This video is not meant to belittle or rather over-authenticate the Luo-ness of one group over the other. We are all Luo to the same level. This video is meant for enlightenment purposes only, for information purposes only. If you're new here, please subscribe. All right, let's get started. The first group that pops out of my mind is the Lua Basuba. Clifford, Amosu Duto, Nyinga and Maginga Clifford, and Jasuba. Muda kichula mara mfangano. Ate mwa chini an aja suba. Nyinga luka sogalo. Aya iku mfangano. Awa chudo luo kodo olu suba. Anya lawa chudo mara abasuba. Kenda anya lawa chudo luo. Not all of them can speak olu suba. But definitely all of them can speak luo. The older generation and very few of my generation are able to speak their own olu suba language. But the vast majority can only speak Luo. Abasuba were originally Bantu groups from the Baganda Kingdom in Uganda. That is one group of Abasuba from the Bahima stock of ancestors. And then another group crossed the lake directly from Buganda and from the Abakunta clan. These were the Abasuba of Mfangano and Wasi. Wagasi. Abasuba were originally Bantu groups from the Baganda Kingdom in Uganda. However, after the killing of Kabaka Njunju, the 24th Kabaka of the Baganda Kingdom, a war broke out. And the Abasuba being accused of killing the king had to escape or face the wrath of being lynched or being killed. So they got into canoes and boats and escaped through Lake Victoria. They paddled all the way, I found themselves in Rosinga and Fangano Islands in the current day Homa Bay County in Kenya. But some proceeded uh, to Gwasi Hills on the mainland. When they arrived in these regions, they found the Luos who accepted them and lived with them in harmony as brothers. But Luo being a very strong, rather dominant culture, absorbed their Basuba culture. So the Abasuba got to learn the Luo language and also adopted the Luo culture. Today, the Abasuba not only speak Luo or practice Luo culture, but they also identify as Luo. The second group is the Kumam of Uganda. Kumam live in the Kabermaido district in eastern Uganda. Kumam are said to have been originally members of the Atikere group. Wait, I'll tell you what a Takere group means. A Takere group includes tribes like Turukana, Toposa, Karamanjong, 
Teso, and some say that Lango could be part of it, but that's debatable. So when the Kumam came into contact with the Luo groups, arguably they are Choli, they got assimilated. They got to adopt uh, the dialect, the Luo dialect of the Acholi, and also adopted the culture. And today, Kumam consider themselves as the Luo. Well, if there is any Kumam who has a contrary opinion, let me know in the comment section. The third group, which again can be debated, is the Lango. Some claim that the Lango's history is the same as the Kumam. It is argued that Lango, similar to Kumam, were members of the Atakere group, which include the Turkana, the Teso, Karamanjong, Toposa, you see. But when they came into contact with the Luo, they got to adopt the Luo language and the culture. And today, as you can see from this video, the Lango consider themselves as the Luo and speak a Luo dialect. This one is quite debated because one of the Lango had this to say. To the best of my knowledge, what I know is Lango is a tribe uh, that's originally Luo. It's not assimilated from any other group, like other sources say. The next in line is the assimilation of the Funj people. Funj Sultanate was a very strong kingdom in the Upper Nile region. Well, now you know that one of the largest Luo groups in South Sudan is the Shiluk. When the Shiluk left the original Luo home, which is Bar al Gazelle, they went up north towards Upper Nile, where they established uh, Shiluk Kingdom or the Cholo Kingdom, and that was in the 15th century. In doing so, or in the process of doing that, they encountered and overpowered the Funj Sultanate. Funj Sultanate was a kingdom or a dynasty of the Funj people. Upon the invasion of the Shiluk, some of the Funj people escaped to the north in the current day northern Sudan. However, those that remained behind got assimilated into the Shiluk culture. Hello, my fellow Luo fraternity. Oh, my name is uh, Jalpa Nupiti Samuel. Uh, I'm a Luo. Uh, she looked from South Sudan, Upper Nile region. Uh, when Nikang moved into present day, Nikang and his entourage who were moving with him, Nikang, the founder of the Chola Kingdom, moved into the present day Chola Kingdom. Uh, they didn't find empty land. They found a well established society known as the Funj Sultanate of the Funj Kingdom. Uh, the Cholo, the coming of the Cholo, uh, led to the collapse of the Funj Sultanate. They collapsed the Funj Sultanate. Uh, causing some of them to flee into present-day uh, northern Sudan. And, but a large number of them who remained behind were assimilated among the Shiluk, were assimilated uh, into the, into the present-day Cholo Kingdom. But how can we tell that they were originally the Funj? The naming pattern is here to show it. And how we know that today is through uh, the social structure that was left behind by Nyikango, whereby everyone um, identifies best identifies by their ancestor who was present during the establishment of the Chola Kingdom, uh, the choir system. Where, but for example, some of the, from some of the present-day Shilu clans that were assimilated from the, from the Fun include the, the Kwar Nidiang, Kwar Nikok, Kwar Mang, and many others. Well, the next in the group is the Dinka. Well, we know that the Dinka exists as a tribe today, but what we don't know is that some of the Dinka people, when they came into contact with the Shiluk, they got to be assimilated. So a portion of the Dinka, a fraction of the Dinka, a percentage of the Dinka got assimilated into Shiluk, and today they consider themselves as the Shiluk in terms of culture and language. Yeah. Also, the other community, the other clans as well, present day clans that were assimilated from other neighboring tribes like the Nuba, the Nuer, the Dinka which include uh, Kwar Bonyo, Kwar Moy, Kwar Bab, uh, Kwar Jang, who are Dinkas, by the way, uh, but uh, part and parcel of the, Shulu, of the Shulu Kingdom today, and have their different roles each into the Shulu Kingdom. Yeah. A part of the Shiluk today, known as the Kwar Jiang, are known to have been originally Dinkas. Kwar Jiang is what the Luo of Kenya would call Nyakwar. Jiang or Nikwa Jiang. Kwar 
in Shiluk is descendant of losses due to assimilation. Well, maybe you are not ready for this because I know Luo are quite proud. But the truth is, the assimilation did not just involve other tribes being absorbed into Luo. The Luo also lost in this assimilation battle. And the group that got assimilated out into other culture uh, is called the Babito Luo or the Paluo. In the 1500s, a group of Luo called the Babito Luo or Paluo went eastwards led by Labongo to the Bonyoro Kingdom. When they arrived at the Bonyoro Kingdom, they established the Babito Dynasty. It is argued that both the Babito Dynasty and the Baganda Kingdom were established by the Luo. However, this group of Luo were assimilated into the stronger Bantu cultures in this region and they lost both their Luo language and culture. Thank you so much and I'm done.